Wall Street closes mixed in a volatile session ahead of the CPI inflation data due to be released tomorrow. The S&P 500 closes flat, the Nasdaq gains while the Dow Jones closes with minor losses. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific have opened largely higher following a choppy session in the US. The GIF Nifty is also suggesting a cautious start for the Indian markets. Crude prices have surged. Brent is topped $82 a barrel as the United States has sent additional forces to counter rising tensions in West Asia. Gold prices have also rallied on safe haven buying. Inflation in the month of July has cooled to its lowest level in nearly five years thanks to a sharp drop in vegetable prices. But industrial output grows at 4.2% in June, which is the slowest pace of growth in five months. And in key earnings to track today, Hero Motocorp is expected to report a strong quarter led by recovery in rural sales. Apollo Hospital's margins and revenue are likely to improve, while Hindalco's first quarter numbers may take a hit due to flooding at its mines. Good morning. On this Tuesday morning, you're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18 in the Mumbai News Center. I am Hormuz Fatakia. Let's first take a look at how the Asian markets have started off. And it's a largely positive start across the Asia Pacific. The Japanese markets have returned after a holiday on Monday. And they are the ones that are leading the gains this morning. The Nikkei is up over 2% as we speak. And so is the Hang Seng is up around 6 tenths of a percent. The Taiwanese index also trading with gains of a quarter of a percent. And Taiwanese index was an outperformer in yesterday's session as well. Now, when it comes to the other indices, the Nikkei is now up over 2.5%. Now, it has extended its gains. The South Korean indices are flat, as is the Shanghai Composite. Both of them are currently trading flat. So, it's a largely positive start across the Asia-Pacific markets led by the Japanese indices who have returned after a holiday. Pull up the gift Nifty as well. And that will tell you how the Indian markets are likely to start off. It's likely to start off on a cautious note. It's been a choppy last few trading sessions for our own markets. The implied open suggesting a 38-point downtick as we speak. Now, for the Nifty, we see how those rates change closer to market open. But right now, it is expected to be a cautious start for the Indian markets. But moving across to the Wall Street now, where the U.S. markets ended Monday's trading session on a mixed note. The Dow Jones closed 140 points lower, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq managed to eke out relatively small gains. Now, all eyes will be on key inflation data, the producer price index, which will be released later this evening, and the CPI data, which is scheduled to be released tomorrow. Now, these reports will be a pivotal uh, a moment for the U.S. economy and to sh show their health going forward as well. CNBC Steve Kovac gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. U.S. markets ended the day mixed to begin the trading week as traders struggled to build on last week's comeback. The Dow was down 141 points, the S&P 500 was basically flat, and the Nasdaq was up 35 points. A New York Federal Reserve report shows inflation outlook is at a new low. A monthly survey from the Fed released today showed consumers are growing more confident that inflation will start to ease in the coming years. The results come with investors remaining on edge about the state of inflation and as many on Wall Street wonder whether the Federal Reserve will start to reduce interest rates as soon as next month. And shares of JetBlue sinking 20 percent today after the airline said it plans to sell 400 million worth of five-year convertible notes as it tries to raise more capital. That caused a couple of ratings firms to downgrade the airline on concerns over its financial outlook. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back to you, Mumbai. Now staying with the U.S. markets, let us also listen in to Savita Subramanian of Bofa Securities as she weighs in on whether the market is too ahead on the Fed cutting interest rates going forward. And admittedly, our economists have been calling for a deceleration, and we're seeing that now. Um, I think the idea that we're going to see a real hard landing unless the Fed cuts excessively is not necessarily the story. So, you know, I would argue that what we're seeing is a reasonably, you know, healthy economy is slowing. The Fed has controlled inflation. We are now at a point where the Fed can begin to cut rates. And that's actually good news for stocks. That's all we have on the global market action. But how will all of these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have our research team joining in with how the trade setup looks like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news this morning, and of course, queues from the FNO space. First up, Vamakshi is joining in to get us the queues from the markets. But first up, uh, we'll get into uh, the stocks that we need to watch out for today. Vivek is joining in. Vivek, good morning. What's on your list? 
Good morning, Harmal. You know, quite a few stocks to keep on our radar. Some on the back of news flow, a lot of earnings flow that's come in post market hours yesterday. First stock on the radar is JSW Steel. The company is looking to acquire almost a two thirds majority in an Australian company called Emres NSW. Uh, the company will be playing paying close to $120 million for this particular stake sale. And now, apart from that, the company will also be investing another $50 million or so. Uh, the other stock on the radar is Marico. Some positive news are coming in over there, some relief. The company says that manufacturing operations in Bangladesh have now resumed at normal scale. Remember, there was some disruption post the protest that the Bangladesh country saw. Uh, the next stock on the radar is NMDC. This is on the back of strong set of numbers. Uh, net profit is coming in at close to 1963 You know, our poll indicated a number closer to 1700 crore revenue. Revenues are also coming in at close to 5,400 versus our pool of close to 5,500 crore. The other stock on the radar on the back of uh, results again will be Vodafone Idea. Vodafone Idea uh, net loss has actually narrowed a little bit. You know, the uh, net loss has come in at close to 6,430 crore. The main number, which is the ARPU number, has stayed flat on a sequential basis, coming in at 146 rupees. Campus activewear, revenues down 4%, profitability down almost 20%. Expect some red over there. Par Mac projects, again, revenues higher by 16.5%, profitability higher by 21%. Good set of numbers from Par Mac. And Hindustan Copper, you know, it's uh, strong growth when you're comparing it on a year-on-year -year basis. Revenues higher by 33%, profitability coming in at 130 13 crore versus just around 47 crore again on a year on year basis. Plenty of earnings reactions to watch out for Vivek. Thanks a lot for that. Over to Vamakshi now who is joining in with all the market cues that you need to watch out for. Vamakshi, good morning. Well, good morning, Hormaz. It was a volatile trading session yesterday. Nifty started the week on a cautious note uh, due to fresh allegations made by the Hindenburg report. In the first hour, however, the, uh, the, the index uh, surpassed last week's high. But in the last hour of trade, it slipped lower and closed slightly below opening levels. And resultantly, Nifty underperformed the broader indices. It was nearly flat but with a negative bias. In fact, uh, top sectoral losers include Nifty Media, which was largely led by the decline that we saw in Sun TV after its numbers. PSU Bank as well as FMCG Index were both some of the uh, losers in the trading session yesterday. But on the flip side, Nifty Realty uh, was the top sectoral gainer. It gained almost 1.32%, followed by Nifty Metal. Railway stocks too were in focus after the uh, after the cabinet nod came in for eight new railway projects worth almost 24,657 crores. Resultantly, we saw gains of as much as 11% on RVNL. Aircon and IRFC too were up over 2%. As far as the US market are concerned, they snapped their three-day losing streak. Dow Jones was up 0.76%, S&P 500 and Nasdaq gained uh, somewhere around 1% each. Uh, as far as the queues today are, is concerned, global queues, uh, watch out for US PPI. We will be watching out for Apollo Hospitals, Hero Motor Corp and Hindalco. Uh, these companies will be reporting their earnings. Uh, First Cry and Unicommerce will, are also expected to list today, so watch out for those counters as well. Uh, Asian markets today are uh, trading with a positive bias. Uh, Japanese stocks led the gains in Asia as Nikkei has climbed more than 2%. Uh, in fact, the U gift Nifty 2 is indicating a rather muted start for the trading session today. Muted start indeed, Vamakshi. Thanks a lot for that update. And over to Sudarshan now who joins in with cues from the FNO space. Sudarshan, good morning. We're still not managing to cross that 24, 350 mark. What's the setup looking like on the FNO side? Good morning, Harma. That's correct. So on Monday, what did we see? So market managed to recover from days low and at the end, it was a close near flat line. For today also, Gift Nifty is indicating a start near flat line. But cues from institutional side are not looking that great. If you talk about the cash market, FI sold shares of almost 4,700 crore, but it was largely offset by DIs, which bought shares of almost 4,500 crore. In the future side also, we saw FI selling shares of almost 420 crore. And at the same time, time have reduced long exposure by 5100 contracts and build on to short uh, positions by more than 2100 and now the long exposure has reduced to 51 percent with total net long contracts of almost more than 15,000. On the options front we saw activities on 24,400 call with addition of more than 10.50 lakh shares and premium is 82.65. In 24,500 call, we saw addition of 15 lakh shares with premium 46. And on the put side, 24,300 strike saw addition of almost 13 lakh shares with premium 105. And 24,200 put saw addition of almost 9 lakh shares with premium 69. 
So now resistance for Nifty is at 24,500 or 24,540, which is 20 day moving average and support is at 24,160. In the stocks, we still have 15 stocks in the band, new entities Sun TV and GNFC is out of band. 15 stocks in the FNO band. We'll keep an eye out for all of them. Sudarshan, thanks a lot for that. Time for a short break here on Power Breakfast. Up next, inflation in the month of July has cooled to its lowest level in nearly five years. We'll get you more on that when we return. Stay tuned. Back on the other side. Back with us here on Power Breakfast. Now, India's consumer price index for the month of July cooled to 3.54%. Now, this is the sharpest fall in nearly five years. And this was driven by a drop in vegetable prices. However, the industrial output growth slowed to 4.2% in the month of June, which is the slowest pace of growth in the last five months. Now, Lata Venkatesh is joining us to take us through the fine print. Lata, tell, tell us how are the numbers. Yes, that's right. It's a bit of a mixed picture that is coming on the macros. But the more important number is CPI because monetary policy is based on the CPI coming down to 4%. 3.54, hurrah! Does it mean that the MPC will move towards a rate cut? No, because the Reserve Bank had guided that we are going to see a fall in inflation in July, August, September because of the base. Year ago, the July inflation was 744 and therefore, the current number was always expected to come below 4. It is transitory. It will move up towards the 4.7 mark as we come to the third quarter as per RBI forecast. But within this, we need to be happy that the CPI number is below market expectation. Our own poll was 3.64, uh, as you know. And within that, the food inflation, which we thought, which our poll said would be 5.5, has come in at 5.4. That's also a minor positive. Going ahead, the monsoon, monsoons have been better than their start. In fact, uh, they are now running at 107% long-term average, uh, as the RBI said. So that would mean that food inflation, the worst, is clearly behind us. Vegetables inflation was the sore point. It was as high as 29% last month in June. Now it's a much more manageable 6.8% year-on-year rise, which means that the worst of the tomatoes and potatoes inflation is also behind us. Pulses is still a sore point, 14% higher YOY, but still better than 16% higher YOY in the month of uh, June. So pr prices are coming off. The one set of prices that have gone up, or at least the year-on-year uh, -year number looks higher, is core inflation, up at 3.4% compared to 3.1% in June. That could be because telecom tariffs are getting included. We saw the recent hikes by all the three telecom, major telecom companies in the country. And uh, the uh, core inflation will also rise because the base effect is eroding. Core inflation was very high in the first half of last calendar year in 2023. It was ranging from 6 to 5%. But as you get further into 2023, it falls to 4% and therefore the base will make the core inflation higher. Uh, th there are not too many fears about core inflation except the base effect simply because the global force factors, both China and US, seem to be disinflationary at this point in time. Very quickly on industrial output, the number is disappointing at 4.2%. Uh, Our own poll was expecting above 5%. But uh, uh, this is not a number that uh, is used for policy. It's an input, one input into GDP. So not to worry too much. The uh, worrying number in the manufacturing, in the IIP number is manufacturing, which has come in at only 26 Within manufacturing, consumer non-durables has come in at minus 1.4. So clearly the consumption wheel is not kicking. And the capex wheel is slowing. It is only 2.4% from 2.9% in the month of May. So uh, it's, it's nowhere near the double digits that it was two years ago. It could be a passing phase because the government didn't spend much during election time. But uh, the output side bears watching. Mixed picture from macros, therefore, good news on inflation. Uh, growth, well, a little bit uh, below the uh, below expectation.
Lata, thanks a lot for that. A mixed picture indeed on the macro front. But over to some news on the taxation front. Now, India's direct tax collections have surged almost 24%, driven by strong personal tax and securities transaction tax performance. Now, according to current data published by the government, as of the 11th of August, gross direct tax collections increased by 24% compared to the same period last year, reaching 8.13 lakh crore rupees. The securities transaction tax grew 111%, while net collections increased by 22.5%. Now, the MSCI has announced changes as part of its August review, with changes set to be made on the 30th of August. Vivek is here to tell us more. Vivek, tell us which stocks were part of the list now. Good morning. You know, it's an all-awaited list that we watch out for every quarter. Now, given the fact that uh, a lot of these expectations are already built in by various quant analysts, it's important to note that a lot of the stocks have priced in uh, the anticipation uh, that the fact that they will get into the MSCI Global Standard Index. The important part, number one, that we need to keep a track on, India's weightage as far as the emerging basket, uh, emerging market basket is concerned, rises to 19.8% second next only to China from 19.4% in the May review. A little over $2.5 billion of inflows is what India can expect to see on August 30th. The MSCI Standard Index will see seven additions and one deletion, and the MSCI Small Cap Index will see 27 additions and six deletions. The MSCI Standard Index is the one that sees the maximum amount of impact. So, which are the seven additions? Uh, Zydus Life, see inflows of close to $218 million there. Prestige Estates, $160 million. Dixon Tech, $257 million. Uh, OFSS, Oil India, Vodafone Idea, and RVNL, these are the stocks that will come into the MSCI Standard Index. On the other hand, Bandhan Bank will see a deletion. Now, very important uh, uh, stock to track on, part, on the back of this MSCI index was HDFC Bank. Ever since the company updated its shareholding pattern to the exchanges, there was anticipation that there will be a weight increase in MSCI. Along expected lines, MSCI has gone ahead and increased the weight of HDFC Bank. There was a hope that you know this would be done in one tranche itself, but what MSCI has done is that they have gone ahead and uh, have decided to implement the weight increase in HDFC Bank in the standard index in two separate tranches. So in this particular tranche, expect to see inflows of close to $1.4 billion. Apart from that, uh, they have also lifted the embargo on treatment of Adani stocks from this particular review itself. So keep an eye out on all of these names, HDFC Bank, RVNL and Vodafone Idea in particular. Vivek, thanks a lot for that. Time for a short break. Up next, we get you all the updates on the Kolkata rape and murder case. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Moving on to the big national story now. The gruesome rape and murder of a 31-year-old trainee doctor at Kolkata's R.G. Kar Medical College and Hospital has triggered a nationwide protest. Resident doctors across several cities, including Kolkata, announced an indefinite strike and halted all services that are not urgent or medically necessary. Now, in Delhi, the doctors are demanding an impartial investigation and adequate security for medical staff. The Maharashtra State Association of Resident Doctors has said that the resident doctors across the state would halt work, except except for emergency services from today in solidarity with residents of the RG Kar Medical College. Now, after meeting family members of the victim, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee has given the police a seven-day deadline to make progress in the case, failing which she would hand over the investigation to the CBI. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Power Breakfast from me and the team that put this show together. Thank you so much for watching. Bazaar Morning Call takes the action forward.